in the early 80s. Yeah. Um, and also, in addition to that, he also played uh, bass for the band Brigandage, who were generally kind of regarded at the time and still now as one of the main players in what was then heralded as the positive punk scene, which was kind of at the time basically associated with, you know, the kind of nascent goth scene. Kind not, of, that yeah, wanna, not that we want to blame you for that. Yeah, we're yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what was it, Richard? We can, we can go there later. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so um, I've written a few pieces in this book, but this this chapter, um, which I'm going to read a couple of pages from, is, is a chapter called 1977, and it begins thus. In the, in the summer of 1977, I am 17, perfect. I don't work, although I washed cars for a week once when my mate Steve went on holiday. The boss said they'd be cleaner if he pissed on them. Ah, fuck off, baldy. I speed a bit, little brown packets tucked in zip pockets and do other stuff too. Inspired by the Ramones and Mark P, I try sniffing glue, but it doesn't work for me. I open the tin and take a tentative little sniffler of cow gum, and surprise, I'm surprised when nothing happens. Little do I realise that you have to tip the stuff in a plastic bag and stick it over your head for five minutes before you can satisfactorily fall flat on your face off your napper. Ah, they should print clear, precise instructions in the punk scenes, for God's sakes. <laughs> I also occasionally indulge in over-the-counter decongestants. One tablet per day is the recommended dose. So I take eight and get a buzz. Wait, if I get a mild hit on eight, then well, what if I take 30? <laughs> I'll feel really good, right? I vomit for a whole day and feel like <laughs> shit for the next three. But, you know, this doesn't stop me from going through the whole process all over again a few weeks later, and so on. 17, yeah. Mostly, I dream of escape. I live in small town, working lower middle class suburbia, Dunstable, Bedfordshire, 30 miles from the capital. Here, kids leave school and go on the track, uh, that's the production line, at the local factory, Vauxhall Motors. If you get some qualifications, you can join the civil service. Woo. Meanwhile, Trevor and Nancy have been going out with each other uh, since third form and watch telly round each other's house every night. I'm not saying a word. I don't know what I want, but I know that I don't want any of that shit ever. Instead, I'm in love with punk rock. I'm in love with picking up momentum and hurling myself forward somewhere, anywhere, rip up the pieces and see where they land. I am suburban punk every kid in pins and zips with a splattering of Jackson Pollock and some seditionaries, getting chased down the King's Road after bunking the train down to the smoke by, strangely, American rednecks rather than teddy boys. Although that does happen too. The raster at the antiques market, Troy his name is, hands out cutthroat razors to harassed punks. And wrap around shades worn after dark so that everything is but murk which might explain a heavy snogging session that turns out to be same sex, rolling about on stage while the damned are playing. Divine decadence, I like to think. I write my first fanzine, Corrugated Boredom, which later becomes Kick, pondering pretentiously on Dada and surrealism and penning bad poetry. Hey, luckily, I still have some around. Here's one. You live in a coffin. You can't move. You're buried alive. You've done it to yourself. <laughs> what can you do before you wanted life? Now you just want existence. <laughs> I try to actually read out live. There, uh, you get the picture. I also bash away on an old four string acoustic guitar, writing clap, crappy, cliched songs. I remember one Blades for Flowers, Drain Pipes for Jeans, Hippies Are Dead and They'll Never Return. 67 reversed has destroyed that dream. Uh, although it's written the year before, in the summer of 76, after seeing Dr. Feelgood. Mid-set, mid Captain Sensible crept up behind Lee Brillo and gave him a mighty two-handed shove into the audience. What a wag. Uh, but the song is obviously inspired by the Pistols, whose gig at the Leighton Buzzard Bossard Hall is banned the very night I go to see them. 
Meanwhile, in my bedroom, there's sniffing glue and other self-defence habits. July 77, some Alistair Crowley, a bit of Sartre, 48 Thrills, bored off Adrian at a Clash gig. Sandy Robertson's white stuff from Compendium in Camden and John Peel, of course, and tons of records. I love the smell of fresh, new punk vinyl, as well as the slightly different scent of Jamaican imports. Pressed on old recycled vinyl because of the cheapness rather than any eco-awareness. All of it a shining, odorous promise of unexpected imaginings. It smells of the future. Can't wait till 78. Definitely. The intensity of sitting in a loud room in a silent town full of electricity. Floating above circumstances and soaring. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. And next we have John 